Hey guys, it's Ryan. In this video, we're going to continue to talk about oral pathology, and now we're going to move to lymphoid neoplasms. So if you notice, some of the things we talked about before, we broke neoplasms into pre-malignant or malignant or benign and malignant, but now we just group all of the neoplasms together. And that's because all lymphoid neoplasms are malignant by nature because they are already invaded past the basement membrane into lymph tissue with connections to the lymph nodes and vessels and can easily metastasize and spread throughout the body. So most lymphoid neoplasms occur in the lymph nodes, but occasionally they arise in extra nodal tissue, which means outside of the nodes, and this tissue called MALT, which stands for mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. And that's where we start to make our oral connection, our connection back to oral pathology. Because otherwise it kind of seems like this is out in left field. But we will make a connection to oral pathology. And some of these actually have very interesting and unique oral as well as head and neck manifestations. So first we're going to talk about Hodgkin's lymphoma. And this one is actually very rare in the oral cavity. And the only thing to really know about this one is that it involves Reed-Sternberg cells. It's a specific type of cell. It's a malignant B cell. And you can see in this histological sample that it looks quite abnormal when you compare it to a normal B lymphocyte. The treatment here would be a mix combination or either chemotherapy or radi radiation therapy. And I usually do this, but the cells that are involved in a given malignancy, I'll have highlighted in red because it's probably the most important thing to remember about each of these, the cell type involved. So Hodgkin's lymphoma involves B cells only. Now next, naturally, we can talk about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, or NHL for short. And this is a neoplasm of either B or T cells. And Burkitt's lymphoma is actually a specific type of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And for Burkitt's, let's remember B for Burkitt's because it's a type of B cell lymphoma. And it involves these signs and symptoms, bone marrow involvement, swelling, pain, tooth mobility, lip paresthesia, which is like a pins and needles sensation. And it also halts root development, which we can see in this x-ray below. These stunted roots is the consequence of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma halting the root development of that molar. Next we have multiple myeloma, and it's also called plasma cell myeloma because it involves, well, neoplasm of plasma cells, which are antibody secreting B cells. For multiple myeloma, I remember multiple as an important word because it has multiple punched out radiolucencies, usually in the skull. In this x-ray here, you can see these um, darker areas that are look like you took a hole punch and punched out these lesions in the skull bone. And this is a little bit complicated here. Um, amyloidosis due to accumulation of complex amyloid proteins that develop from antibody light chains. I would just remember maybe this connection to amyloid and it has to do with antibodies, which makes sense because we're, of course, talking about plasma cells here, which are secreting antibodies. And lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about leukemia, which is actually a really convoluted disease. And I feel like this could have its own 30-minute video dedicated to talking about it. So I'm really simplifying things here and probably cutting out... Um, a lot of information, but I'm trying to keep just the highest yield stuff for the part two board exam. So leukemia is a neoplasm of bone marrow cells and lymphocytes, natural killer cells, granulocytes, and megakaryocytes, uh, most of which we're of course talking about white blood cells here, but it also can um, affect and impact red blood cells and platelet production, as we'll see in just a little bit. So the classification of leukemia is based on two things, on cell lineage, whether it's a myeloid blood stem cell or a lymphoid blood stem cell. Those are the two 
um, branching off points of the original hematopoietic blood stem cell and whether the disease is acute or chronic. So here is basically a spectrum from ALL, CML, AML to CLL in terms of the youngest, which, which disease form will affect the youngest patients, all the way to which disease form will typically affect the oldest patients. So this is basically an order, and I should um, clarify that each of these stands for a specific classification that we just talked about. So ALL stands for acute lymphoid leukemia or lymphocytic leukemia, and then CML is chronic myelogenous leukemia, and then acute myelogenous leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So that's all four of those. And this order is important to know. There might be a question on this um, in terms of which one would most impact, say, the youngest patient population, and that would be ALL, or which one impacts the oldest population, that would be CLL. And one mnemonic I use for this is that all children are chill. And this is because we can start with ALL here, then we start with CML, which starts with only C, R starts with A for AML, and then chill has all three letters, C and L and L. So that's kind of how I can remember that ordering from youngest to oldest. And this is, again, super simplified, but in terms of just pumping out an important factoid for a question, this can be helpful to have in the back of your head. And again, although there is an overproduction of white blood cells, leukemia also impacts red blood cells and platelets. So one way to remember the three main clinical signs are that bleeding is one of them, which involves platelets, fatigue, which involves red blood cells carrying oxygen throughout the body, and infection, which involves white blood cells, which are supposed to fight infection. So when we have an, uh, co a compromised platelet, red blood cell, and white blood cell um, population in the body, these three things will manifest as clinical signs. So although there is overproduction of blood cells and the lab results would read high for a specific type of white blood cell, what white blood cell say, the neutrophils, they are immature cells that are being overproduced. And so, so the overall function of the blood cells is reduced. And that's why we're seeing this bleeding, fatigue, and infection, because the cells that are being produced in the body with leukemia are immature and ineffective. All right, so that's all we have for this video. I hope you found it helpful and interesting. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more oral pathology and other things dentistry. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.